Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for watching my show again. We're going to continue with the book, Captain Nobody. So I think we're on chapter two. Okay. Chapter two. In which Halloween plans are made? Sort of. When I got to school that morning, the playground at Appleton Elementary was packed with kids running around. Punching, a tr punching each other and shrieking as usual. I took a deep breath and squeezed my way through the crowd. Whenever I saw one of my classmates, I waved and quietly said, How's it going? Like I do every morning. And like they do every morning, they looked right through me. I plopped down on a large boulder at the far end of the schoolyard, sharpened a pencil and began to draw in my secret superhero sketchbook. When I was really small, Chris would sit sit me in his lap and he can and and read to me from his humongous collection of comic books. Even though I was too young to understand the stories, I was hypnotized by his pictures of the superheroes with their awesome powers. As soon as I could hold a pencil, I spent hours on the floor to Chris's bedroom, carefully tracing the characters in his own comics. When I got a little older I began to invent my own. My sketches were pretty crummy. But eventually my scrawls began to take shape. First I created a master key, a crime fighter whose hands could transform into keys that could open any walk in existence. After that came Paperboy, who could flatten his body until it was so thin that he could slip under any door. Since then I've filled dozens of secret superhero sketchbooks, but I've never shown my drawings to anyone. Except JJ and Cecil, of course. Junita Jofina Gonzalez. JJ for short, is the tallest girl in the fourth grade, with a head full of thick, untamed black hair. She cast a very recognizable shadow over my sketchbook. Hey JJ, hey JJ, I said without looking up. Hey Newt, she leaned over my full, over my shoulder and studied the picture. Oh, I like this one. What's his name? Wait, wait, wait! Cecil Butterworth shouted, racing across the playground. Don't tell your story yet. Cecil was the only kid in that class who was shorter and skinnier than I am. But what he lacks in size, he makes up for in volume. Once he joined us, Cecil slapped his hands and said, Alright, let's have it. Who's today's super freak? I'm calling this one Guy Wire. He used to be a wimpy librarian, but he was exposed to radiation from a meteorite. He discovered that he could stretch his arms and fingers and legs into steel wires and do cool things like turn his legs into springs and bounce anywhere he wants to go. Sweet, laughed Cecil. Highly com commendable, JJ nodded. Highly what? JJ raised an eyebrow. Ladies, sometime I swear you swallowed the dictionary. JJ taught herself to read at the age of three with the, the help of a wooden alphabet puzzle and a really big brain. She hadn't stopped reading ever since. Commendable just means deserving of praise, JJ explained. Like Newt's drawing. Well, I think it deserves a drum roll. Cecil pulled two drumsticks out of his backpack and did a quick rat-a-tat on the rock where I was sitting. Cecil's dream is to be a drummer, but until his parents break down, get earplugs and buy Cecil a drum set of his own, he's determined to practice every chance he gets. C Cecil fi finished his drum solo with a crash, bish, and then announced, Okay, listen up. Does anybody remember what day of the weekend it is? Please, I exclaimed, it's the weekend of the big game. Shook his head. I'm talking about Sunday. JJ and I shared a shrug. Hello, Cecil waved his arms about. Can anybody say Halloween? Really, I said, this Sunday? Ever since we met in first grade, JJ, Cecil, and I have been always trick-or-treating together. But I guess I've been so wrapped up in my brother's final big game that Halloween has slipped my mind. You know what? You know what, guys? JJ twirled a strand of hair around her finger and squished up her nose. I'm bored with Halloween. Bored with Halloween? Cecil yelped. I got two words for you. Free candy. Oh, come on. We're in fourth grade now, JJ insisted. We've outgrown candy. <laughs> now you're just talking crazy, Cecil scoffed. That made me laugh. Cecil can always make me laugh. And besides, JJ added, our costumes suck. They always have. We all nodded glumly. See, the three of us have always been forced to wear hand-me-downs. 
like her four sisters before that, JJ had been a flamenco dancer twice, Starbucks counter goal girl once, and last year she was Jennifer Lopez. Cecil always wears the same old Wolverine mask that his brothers have gotten so much use out of. The first year, we all went on trick and treat her together. My mom completely forgot that it was Halloween. So at the last minute, I searched through the stacks of plastic storage bins in our garage until I found Chris's old cowboy suit. I've been a cowboy ever since. I refuse to be J Lo again, JJ moaned. My Wolverine mask is falling apart, Cecil griped. My cowboy pants have split, I sighed. After a gloomy moment of silence, Cecil looked up. You know, what's wrong with us? I didn't realize there was something wrong, I said. Me neither, JJ said. But if there was, what would it be? Cecil swept his arms to indicate the hundreds of kids at play. To everybody in this school, we are invisible. I don't think you actually mean invisible, JJ corrected him. Because our bodies do have mass and they do reflect light. Okay, everybody ignores us then. Cecil turned to me. Doesn't it bother you how kids are always stepping on us in the hallway and it's almost like we aren't there? Well, that's really short, I suggested. And JJ, Cecil went on, how does it, how does it make you feel when people shove you away from the water fountain? That's only happened eight or nine times, she said quietly. Well, what about in the cafeteria when they slide our food off the table and squeeze us out of our seats? JJ and I exchanged a look. He had a point. Nobody pays any attention to us any other day of the year, Cecil declared, waving a finger overhead as if he were preaching. And I say that Halloween's the only night we get to say, look at me, look at me, and you know what? People will. Why, I asked. Who we gonna be? Anybody we want, Cecil said fir firmly. JJ shook her head. I don't think you actually mean anybody. There are only a limited number of character costumes manufactured each year, and I'm not talking about some some costume in the box at Walmart. Shrek? Heck, Darth Vader? See you later. I said we I said we get personal. We gotta dig deep down inside and find our inner other. Our inner other? JJ snorted. Despite her large vocabulary and extensive knowledge of books, JJ is generally suspicious about new ideas. Especially Cecil's. Yeah, our inner others who we would be if we didn't have to be us. Cecil's on a roll now. Think of it like uh, a personal hero. What if we're, I don't have one, I asked. A personal hero, I mean. We've all got one. Cecil whipped around the Jeep. JJ. You, isn't there anybody in those books you're always reading? Somebody witchy and wonderful you secretly wish you could be for one night? Cecil's question caught JJ by surprise. Ever since she read a ten-part epic called The Crystal Cavern Chronicles, JJ has been hopelessly hooked on stories about witches, wizards, and dragons. I don't know. Maybe, she stuttered. Maybe, Cecil taunted. That's not the JJ I know. Well, okay, Mr. Motivation, JJ fired back. Who would you be? Yeah, who's your hero, Cecil, I asked. Me? Cecil squinted until a thought hit him, and he smiled. Music. Music's my hero. JJ frowned. But you can't dress up as music. Who says? Cecil threw up his hands. I can wrap myself in a sheet of music and come as a symphony. What about you, Newt? JJ asked. Who's your inner other? Yeah, you're always whipping up those crazy cool crime fighters, Cecil said, pointing to my secret superhero sketchbook. Which one of them is you? I flipped through my drawing pad, but nothing caught my eye. I, I have to give it some thought with all I can manage. Okay, how's this? Cecil's eyes were sparkling. We got three days. We make our own costumes, and then on Halloween night, we surprise each other. JJ still seemed nervous. But easy enough, if I knew who I wanted to be, she stammered. Let's just say, where? I mean, how do we get the clothes? All right, where do we, I wondered. Where's your imagination, people? Cecil cried. Are these not the top three minds in the fourth grade? We shrugged in agreement. JJ started, but what if I can't? Cecil held up a finger to her lips, just the first bell rang. Up, oh, zip it, he ordered. No more can't, don't, weren't, won't. We're going to think positive, heroic thoughts, and in three days we're going to have our own Halloween parade. What do you say? 
JJ and I smiled at each other as we gathered up our stuff and headed to class. That'd be so cool, I said. Let's do it for us. For us, JJ echoed. And shouted Cecil. For free candy. And that is the end of chapter two. Please do not subscribe. I don't have Facebook, but if you like, I'll be very appreciative. That'd be awesome and great. Peace out. Oh.